think what you'll find is suppliers' minimums can be remarkably small. In gift in the housewares, five thousand dollars worth of good goods has been real common. Uh, in some publishing, it's two thousand bucks, mm, twenty-four hundred. Uh, in uh, for printing books overseas, for uh, uh, carpets, hand knotted carpets, wool dyed to your specification, uh, designs to your specification, uh, ten thousand dollars worth. Okay, so any size and shape you want, wool dyed your specification, then hand knotted. This is out of China. That's not that. That could be one carpet. That could be ten smaller carpets. Uh, so in the shapes, you can any shape you want to get. So uh, you'll find these are remarkably small. Okay, so you come in with a remarkably small amount, get it distributed over the retail stores, and loading on the premiums necessary in the market you're going into. And you begin there. Then the buying from you is, is not much of a risk because they're taking too few. Now, the supplier overseas is not taking much risk because they've set up a minimum at which they will make money but does not cause them grief if something goes wrong. So they've gotten rid of their risk. You bring in that minimum of, say, $10,000 worth of goods, that minimum of $10,000 worth of goods, and you're going to sell it collectively to a variety of retail stores for $20,000. Okay? And then the retailer is going to take that twenty thousand, and they're going to sell it collectively for forty thousand. Okay. So what it costs ten, you ten is going to end up with forty thousand dollars in the in the retail stores. Now this just as a little side note. This is why when you look at things at specialty stores, and you say, "Doggone, look at those! How expensive they are! These gloves from oh, they're made in the Philippines. When I go to the Philippines, I can get them dirt cheap." True. But when you go to the Philippines and get them dirt cheap and take them through the most efficient distribution channel, you'll find out they end up being the same price too. So you don't, you're not going to get any advantage there. And this is why you'll go down to, to Walmart and you'll see these people from all over the world and they're buying stuff from Walmart. Why? Because it's cheaper to buy Chinese made stuff in Walmart than it is in China. That you can actually find because Walmart's got such buying power that they can load up on uh, things that you can buy, uh, that you can get in China, but you can get them better than the real thing here in Walmart. Does that make sense? You following that? Okay. Uh, there's a big business. Go, go down to, well, here's another place. Go down to uh, the Apple store and try to buy more than two iPhones. Big business buying iPhones in the United States and shipping them back to China where they're made. Okay. Let me give you an example of where this happened when the first uh, iPods came out. Uh, it was real quick where I saw a website that said uh, iPod, uh, Apple did not design the iPod and Apple did not do the software. They farmed that out. Brought all the, they had the specs, they brought it all together. So as soon as that happened, there was a company offering um, iPods unbranded the exact thing, the exact same thing. Um, so it was functionally an iPod. And it was the people that were making it for Apple. Then there was a software company that wrote the software that was selling the software. And you could buy the two and put them together. And at, I don't know, like 60% of the price of an iPod. Um, that lasts a couple of weeks. Just people don't want to do it. They prefer to go and pay the premium price and get the real thing and have zero problems. Now, uh, you know, I shouldn't say two weeks. It's probably still up there. You can probably still do it. But those are techies. That's such a tiny bit of the market. In Hong Kong, there's a Rolex store. The real live Rolexes that are for sale. Uh, been there 30, 35 years. And outside on Nathan Road and, or Canton Road is where they stand and as you walk by they say, hey, would you like a Rolex? Okay, so outside they're selling Rolexes, inside they're selling Rolex. And I never bought them except one time I was walking across the street and a guy asked me, somebody asked me to get him a fake Rolex in Hong Kong. So I was having a guy, I came back to the guy and I said, uh, uh, no, I don't want to buy a Rolex from you. I want to buy a fake Rolex from you. And the guy looked at me and said, what do you think I sell? <laughs> I'm some real Rolexes for 80 bucks. No, if you want the 81, it's got the Seiko movement, and the $25 Rolex has got the junk movements. Which one do you want? So, I mean, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, uh, I thought you saw the real ones. But, uh, uh, so we went down this alley, down the stairwell, and then back up and all that kind of stuff. And I've done this a couple times, and uh, uh, <laughs> I said, uh, I said hey, you, you want this, you want a Movado, we got this, we got that. And I said, uh, you know, I might be interested in a Tagahoya. And he said, next spring, we got those. <laughs> those, are, those are coming up, coming shortly. Well, that's pretty funny. But uh, uh, did I answer your question? Yeah, so I guess it's just like that. You could say you could you well, pay the same amount to create that brand image, right? 
right? So they've already put that into establish their mode. So if you want to do that, the only way you're going to do it is try to sell for less, compete on price. Right, right. You're not going to win that game. Yeah. Okay. Why? And then why would you want to win that game when you can come in with your product at, uh, and take your take your profits? And that's going to make more sense when we get into finding product and how you come up with product that's best for you to sell to, because you shouldn't be selling what he's selling. Because it's gonna what he's selling is unique to him, unique, unique, and competing on design. Even if you're both selling hats, your designs will be different. Okay, if your shop is selling dresses, the designs are different. Okay, across the street from Barney's is Betsy Johnson. They both have dresses, but they're different dresses. Okay, uh, both competing on design. So uh, there. Uh, okay, now so they either reorder or they don't. If they do reorder, then your business doubles one, uh, 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 the next time you sell. You sell twice as money because more and more people are buying. If it doesn't, if you do get no reorders, then why not? Wrong shape, weight, speed, function, material. They'll tell you how to fix it. Okay? Then you go back, you get it right, you fix it, you go on. And you start growing from here, bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay? Now, and then as they come and say, red sweater sold, well, you should sell mittens as well. Well, then you start another circle. It gets bigger, bigger. So you're, if you like, your business can grow exponentially, and you can grow it to whatever level you want. And as you'll see later, what a lot of people do is they get to a certain point and they stay there because this is where they're happy at five million dollars a year in sales. That's it, or a million dollars a year in sales. That's it, ten percent net, whatever they want. We'll talk more about that later in the, in the building of the companies and all that. But uh, then you get a company circles going, and you get more and more going like that. Now, as you grow, sell more and more of these sweaters to more and more people, and your orders are getting bigger and bigger to each of the people, at some part of the point of the game, along comes a big, nasty company, big conservatory that says, look at that item. It sells well. Let's steal it. Don't we all fear that? At the small business level, at some point, they're going to steal our idea. So what do we do at the small business level? While in America, we go out, we get intellectual property rights. We spend all sorts of money protecting our idea from others, okay? Now, two times in this course, I'm gonna tell you, do not ever protect any of your ideas, okay? It's gonna be two times. One's gonna be right now, and another's gonna be later when we talk about uh, dealing with designers and, and uh, actually buying goods overseas. Now, why never protect your idea? Because there's no point in doing it at the small business level. Small business level, we sell products and we make money, okay? Then as we sell the products, we sell more and more, at some point, the, the big people are going to come in and steal the product. Example, here in Seattle, there was a fellow importing exotic fruit juice concentrates from Brazil. Why Brazil? Because he spoke Portuguese, so he wanted to trade in Brazil. Okay? So exotic fruit juice concentrates from Brazil. Starts selling in the Seattle area, breaks out of the northwest market, gets down to California, starts going uh, east and uh, uh, sells more and more and say at a Whole Foods one day, the Whole Foods people take out a slot of a bigger company's product and drop in a slot of his frozen fruit juice concentrates. Then in comes the salesperson that stocks that, those slots from a big company and says, I just lost a slot to the small upstart company from Seattle who's been in business five or six years. Why, I will buy one of these in that slot I'll take it back to my big company's headquarters and I'll say, put down your Krispy Kremes and get to work and come up with a product that will compete with this small up company, upstart company in Seattle. So what they will do is what any importer will teach you, what I'll teach you in the coming weeks, and that is to find the best place in the world to have your product made. They'll go through the process and they'll find it. And say that happens to be Thailand. Now, when this fellow started, he went to Brazil. Why? Because he spoke, spoke Portuguese. So the big company finds out Thailand is the best place in the world. Objectively, you can find this out on your computer, at home, free of charge, and I'll take you through that process. It's one of the things you're going to learn in this course, how to do this yourself. No charge. Hey, man. Let's get together.